again, we have a question with no solid right or wrong answer. There are several different relationships that we could predict for this individual. Great grandparent, grand uncles, aunts, first cousins. And there's a lot of information we could use to help figure out which of those groups best fits. We could look at the age of the individuals. We could compare the Y and mitochondrial chromosomes, the haplogroups, to see how that fits in. We can even look at interesting patterns of X chromosome matching. Obviously, the more information that's able to be shared between the two individuals is going to facilitate the best particular guess that we're able to give that person to tell them what the possible relatedness is. Now, as far as advice to give to help them connect, probably some of the best advice is whatever it takes for them to be prepared for the outcome that it could be. As you can imagine, these relationships and these surprises and non-surprises very differently vary from person to person. I want to draw your attention one more time to the family rainbow that we've seen in lessons five and lessons 11 in this course. The representation of helping you see what the different genetic relatedness, what your relationships are with different people in your family in this sort of hierarchical way. 100% to you, 50% to your mothers, 50% to your parents and siblings, 25% on the next rung, 12.5% on the next rung. And you keep going out and each time you go out, you sort of half the amount of information. Ultimately, you've got to be a good Sherlock Holmes. You've got to use context clues and you've got to talk to people. Genetic genealogy is an amazing profession.